All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayamba. Welcome to our conference call for uh, Garvey Town. And uh, we're here to continue from our last uh, conference call uh, last month, approximately about uh, four weeks ago. And the main part of uh, that conference call was just us talking about the documentation of Garvey Town. All right, so uh, family, what I want to do is just give us a brief introduction on our connection from Africa Tours and Investment to our link with our Garvey Town. And then uh, I'll give some updates and uh, we have a few other people that have information to share and then we'll open things up for questions. My uh, ultimate connection um, to Garvey Town just literally, I want to say 15, 16 years ago in 2003, had access to lots of books and documentation, videos, and information like that. And so literally just put uh, a lot of time into the studying for a full year, which continue to study on to now. But uh, that uh, initial dedication just made it clear that, you know, wanted to connect to Africa and wanted to just open up, you know, open up to the future. But, you know, when you first started studying about Africa roots and culture and the future of Africa, you literally, you know, you're literally still not clear on many things. So this uh, journey uh, of mine this, uh, began uh, from there on in 2004 uh, when I was given the name Bomani Taimba by the Shrine of the Black Madonna. It's a church. Uh, I actually went to their history, uh, history class program and studied, uh, you know, studied and I was able to build a nice energy where my uh, elders and my peers came together and you know, connect me with that uh, name energy. So that was around the same time I started going to... Um, now, Africa went to Senegal in March of 2004 and Egypt, April 2004. So that brought me to more of energy where just you know you're you're finally connected to Africa. You have you know you have the African name and you're part of organizations and you you know you you have a lot of things going on. You're you're hearing about all these things in America, but then the part that we never really talk about was how are we going to connect to Africa and do all these things in Africa because we hear about all the you know all these movements and they have Africa on it so. I literally wanted to ex explore more and travel more to Africa, so I spent more time in 2005 traveling. Also, uh, the energy of traveling there, I came up on this, so much documentation, this recording and shooting videos. That ended up connecting me into wanting to be an IT technician because I realized that so much stuff has to deal with computers when you get all these documentation. And it literally created a business for myself uh, called Bomani Technology in February 2005, which is really based on the 2004 travels, which connected to 2005. So as I move up uh, some more in uh, October 2006, you know, we started our business called Africa for the Africans Tours and Investment. And that was around the same time too. I did not know these folks, uh, the Garvey Town Company, in 2004 to about 2006, they initially set everything up as for in Ghana, right there, well, you know, where I'm traveling to and, and bringing groups of people. And for some reason, I still don't get how I never connected with the Garvey Town Company because I'm always reaching out to my different brothers and sisters there to find out, you know, what's going on with uh, groups and organization and community building. So moving forward uh, some more, uh, that energy just really just, propelled to where we continue doing tours and investments in Ghana from 2006 to 2018. Our last tour was in November. So once we spent all that time just going to Ghana, I was always trying to connect with other people about communities. And we worked with the Fianco group for eight years. And uh, I connected with uh, Nunet and Benu Village, which I'm still connected with her. But I brought a few groups up there. And Ultimately, once I connected with the folks in Garvey Town in November 2018, um, I literally realized and compared the situation to everything else that's, that I've, you know, I'm clear with in Ghana. And now we have lawyers look at it, uh, some of my best friends, best people look at it, and we all checked off on it. So here we are uh, now at this uh, very moment where uh, once we looked over everything, the beginning of this year is when we set Garvey Town open for business and literally the, the resurrection of this situation uh, and surrounding this project to make it successful with a lot of unique people. Let me connect everyone to right to the point to what we got going on with Garvey Town now. 
So on our website, AfricaSouthAfricans.org, and I won't go over too much with this. Um, once you get to our website, you see a link that says Garvey Town, and there's, a f there's well over 10 articles. It should be approximately 13 articles. They're not long. Uh, most of them are very short and direct to the point. The main one I want to talk to everybody about is the getting started. Uh, getting started, it's, um, it's an email I have attached to uh, getting started also. So everyone that's on this call that I'll send out email to, if you in your inbox and you type in getting started, that Garvey Town uh, email will pull up. It has an application, passport style photo, and a birth certificate. It's basically telling you exactly what you need to scan and send to us. And also in that document, as, as you look at it, the document has the price list. So 70 by 100, uh, 7,000 square foot, and that's 640. And also for every plot price, there's a $300 administrative cost. So those are the two initial price. 100 by 100, 10,000 square foot is $1,093 plus the 300. 125 feet by 100 feet, which is 12,500 square foot, $1,360. So those are the initial prices and the 300. And the only other price that we have, um, which is the latest price that I got from uh, Garvey Town, is to get our plot set up, organized, um, get it cleared out completely, and get the pillars set up. So that's something I have to talk to us, the first 21 people that have paid their money and fill out the application. So we're on that next stage where that's the next set of money that we need to move forward with. And then beyond that, the next set of things that we need to work on is our building plans. But for those who are just joining, just want to make sure you understand that those are the two costs, but there's other costs, as you can, as you know, this is a community and other things have to be done. Uh, so everything is more communal, because so what we do is we put the, the cash together as far as when we, when we are trying to clear the land. So right now, um, I have lots of pictures on, the, on Facebook, on the group page, and it shows the land being cleared, plots being cleared, and it shows things being organized. So trying to give you know, people updates on the things that are going. So from November, showing you this how the situation look, and then now showing you that it's clearer. Next thing you know, you're going to see plots being marked off, roads being marked off, houses going up, and the community develop. So we worked this process for a good uh, five years. We'll get to this point. But the main thing I want everyone to do that's interested in this project is literally read through all the information. If you don't have the getting started email with the application, request it, fill it out, send your money in, and if we can get another 20, 30 applications in uh, in the next few months, then it moves us a little further where we can keep on moving, and that's how this thing gets done. But the biggest problem with these projects has been so many people coming to the project and looking around and being discouraged and eventually just not, not, you know, not being interested. Um, you know, so it's, but they'll go somewhere else and get land and then get into their drama and then they'll want people like ourselves, me and David or Gary Dean and his folks to help them. So those have been some of the, 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 the situations, but uh, the population that we have here in America is, it's, it's, it's a lot of us and you know, we don't need a whole bunch of people, it's only 300 plots. And we feel like the best of us come together, we'll be able to make this work. So family, once again, uh, everybody who have sent that email to for the applications, please start filling applications out. And if you still just waiting to see certain other progress, hold the money, and then when you clear, you pay the money, and then you select your plots. For anybody that we have have plots on standby, it requires you to complete the application still and send the money in, so we can hold the plot for a little bit. But uh, any plots that we have that are on standby without application in the next 10 days, we're going to have to just clear it because I have a lot of people you know, one certain plot and it's basically those who are ready and come first get the access to it. So we're working the first one to 100 plots and it looked like almost the first 60 in that area is being clear. So for those of you who hear me talking about the site map and things, you know, note that the first two articles on the Garvey Town page have site maps and details and links to where the location of the project so those are the things that we want people to be clear on and look at. That way we don't have to get, you know, go into too, too many of these uh, questions. Now going down to the getting started uh, information, um, it's just basically telling you what, uh, we, what the $300 represents and us being your representatives to where you don't have to 
be forcefully trying to reach out to all the people at Garvey Town to get updates. You, you can just go to us and we'll update you because number one situation, the signal there is bad. So we do have um, Brother Davi Jawara, uh, who lives close to Garvey Town. Uh, he usually takes here a lot of the direct conversation in business. And when, when him and Gary Dina speak, we usually just get updates and I shit updates with you. Uh, it's just one of those things where until we just get an office there set up with you know, several people to run operations, we just have to work it from here. So we're doing all and everything what it takes to make it work without having to wait or having to just, you, know, you know, keep laying around. So everything is full speed ahead. And that's the only thing that I want us to talk about is being positive and being clear. No one is losing any money. No one is getting scammed. No one is getting up in any drama. Anyone who feels that way, you really do not need to be on this conference call. We have provided too many documentation, and I've been in this business too long, and I've, you know, we, we've shown all of our connections. Um, and you're dealing with us. You're not dealing with a random group of Ghanaians, which is the worst to deal with, or random groups of Nigerians or anyone from West Africa, because you, there's no way to be accountable for the situation, because once you live in any of those countries, you can move along any country all day long. Um, you know, so those of us, myself, Amicus, David, and a few other people, this is the world that we live in, the world that we've been in, and we're, you know, in this movement we're known, and we're known for delivering, and I want people to, to see that. And part of delivering is the commitments from the individuals. If we sit and just watch, you know, be spectators and watch all the stuff that others are doing in Garvey Town and things, you know, that's no good for us. We want you to jump in the game. Uh, I feel like everyone I've shared and talked information with, you have gotten more than enough to start. There's no hesitation. And I take full accountability for this project. Um, and that's what the administrative cost is for. That way I can have what I need to be, you know, to make it work. So, um, you know, at this point, just want to kill all doubts and just be honest with everyone and anyone who's going to come with doubts and negativity because we just don't have time for that. We're too far behind. Uh, from 2009 to 2019, it's probably was a struggle to get things done on Garvey Town, and I definitely understand. And most of this, most of that, having to do with us not wanting to uh, or not supporting. And then also we, uh, we as the people who are presenting opportunities, have to be great with our presentation, and then also close out with execution. So we've been talking about that in Garvey Town. I've talked to Quaku about it. I talked to Garrodine and David, and you know we're all aware of you know the things that have happened in the past that have slowed the project down, but now we're like, all right, we have a solid game plan. We have lots of people on standby. I have a, lot, a long list of people who have communicated the last few months in reference to this project. All right, so family, once you uh, scroll down to the getting started, you're going to see Garvey Town Project Management Team. Um, you'll see my name up there first uh, as I try to take all of the calls and everything. Gary Dean is there, but he's more focused on the land development. As you see him in the pictures, and he's just there showing people around and explaining the land because he understands the layout of how everything works there. So we're doing our best to make sure that we surround him with all the support he needs so he can focus on the things that he can do real good, which is handling the property and the land there. So even David dropped off the last set of applications and printed all out the reports so they can have all of the updated reports on, 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 on us. And another thing I'm working on is our background check. And once they get that, uh, all of us will be clear to build. Uh, so on this list also, you'll see uh, Ruth Paha, which is, she lives there as the secretary of Garvey Town. And you can always contact her for those who are going to Ghana. I'm telling you this because that way you have the information in front of you. Because sometimes people get there and they like, they're calling us and things like that, and that's not the way to do it. You want to set up things properly without us, and at the same time, too, you want to print out some of the Garvey Town information before you even go to Ghana. But I'm um, showing you where it's all at. David and, David and Ruth are the people to contact that can get you there. Kwabina and uh, Kwesi Prempe are builders, and they live in the same exact area, Kaswa, which is 15 minutes away from where Garvey Town is. So they're also there on standby. So those are the four Ghana, Ghana numbers where you can reach out and connect with our folks. And it's best if we connect with them before we leave here, and I can you know, connect you to them on the WhatsApp and things like that. So those are conversations that we have to just directly talk about uh, before you leave and want to go there. Um, all right, so family, that's uh, everything on getting started. I'm going to stop, and um, let me see if... Uh, Yakisha, are you uh, up? I'm here, Mama. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, you're loud and clear. 
I just wanted to get you to just give a brief uh, introduction on how you connected to Garvey Town, and then this, um, then we can probably also just you can probably share some information you shared last time as far as uh, Brandon and uh, MigratingCulture.com website. Okay. Yes. Family greetings. Well, I was the November, November Ghana 2018 tour. And that's when I had my first encounter with Garvey Town and saw uh, the potential of us being able to build together a sustainable community. So I decided then that I wanted to retire in Ghana. Uh, now, in regards to uh, migrating um, culture, Brother Brandon Rogers is uh, from the uh, diaspora. He is from Florida. And uh, he is an architect, and he has built uh, several different uh, homes in Ghana, across Ghana. And his uh, website is uh, Migrating Culture. Uh, that's uh, M-I-G-R-A-T-I-N-G culture.com. And he has a lot of information there for you to uh, review and look for yourself, uh, all the information he has listed. Um, I've seen a couple of uh, YouTube videos of his work, and he also has a Facebook page as well. Uh, but uh, the, the last call I went over briefly was the prices of the domes. Um, the monolithic domes is a sustainable housing uh, concept that he has came up with. Um, he has many different sizes, anywhere from 80 square feet to uh, 1,250 square feet. And those, the prices range anywhere from 2,500 U.S. dollars to uh, 30,000 U.S. dollars. So you're looking for a size anywhere from a uh, closet space, a kiosk, or all the way to a three-bedroom home. Or you can do a cluster of different sizes. It's all depending on what your preference is. And the only requirements that he shows is that ownership of the land in Ghana, and, of course, you have to have your funds available uh, for the project. Uh, the, for as the time, the estimated time of the construction period is anywhere from four weeks to approximately six months, depending upon... Uh, whatever you're asking for branding to uh, build for you. Uh, and that's now the monolithic domes, those are the only uh, infrastructures where he has actual prices for. The uh, other ones, whether you want the earth bag building technique or the traditional mud homes or the clay bricks, uh, those different methods, you will actually have to uh, contact uh, Brandon on his website, and you have to book an appointment. And I believe there's also a survey that he has on there as well that uh, asks a lot of different lengthy questions, and which those questions are necessary in order for Brandon to make the proper assessments for as your budget, your approximate um, relocation uh, to Ghana, and also um, whether you have your, your floor plan together. So those different types of questions that particularly any builder, professional builder would ask. And let's see, but that's pretty much all the information that I have to share on Brandon. Like I said, he is available on uh, Facebook. I've contacted him on Facebook. I've communicated with him via email several times. So uh, he, he's not like a ghost or anything like that. So you can actually contact Brandon at any time. I would actually recommend that you would contact Brandon. At least you can get your, your survey in now. So when you're ready to start building, he will at least have something there in record sh showing and stating that, okay, during 2020, this person here will be ready to build and they're looking for this type of infrastructure. So I would recommend going ahead and doing that now. I have already uh, submitted my survey to Brandon. So whether you're ready to build now or later, it will be recommended to go ahead and get your every aspect of your building plan completed 
So when you get the green light to move forward, you can move without hesitation. And that's pretty much what I have for for that uh, for money. All right, excellent. And also, um, you sent out some emails. Uh, t you sent out an email or two to the uh, the group of us that uh, have plots um, and okay. uh, shared information about yeah. the, um, the email that was sent. Yes, I can elaborate. On. Yes, uh, family. For those the Garbertown landowners, I sent an email uh, specifically to the Garbertown landowners, and that's just for temporarily for now. Uh, for those of us who've already uh, purchased plots in Garvey Town, uh, what the email is for is is for us to begin to put our um, our minds forward thinking together now. And there's a listing of different areas of interest, whatever your field of expertise is, whether you're whatever you're interested in, whatever it may be. Uh, let's go ahead and start the process of making that commitment to decide on what area that we feel that we're best suitable for in Garvey Town to uh, make this community successful. So I myself will be in a number of different um, aspects according to my uh, skill set, which is education, uh, dealing with nutrition, health and wellness, and also dealing with information technology. So those are my three uh, fields there. However, uh, just because you're, you may be professional in one field, you may be asked to go and help a brother or sister out in a, another area. So just keep those things in mind. And um, in the email, it asks for you to reply back um, to the email with your name, email address, and area of interest. Now, in regards to the area of interest, they're broad. They're not uh, specific because we know that in every area, there's always a subcategory within every area. So we want to start with that general broad category first. Once we get enough people um, that uh, they're in Garvey Town, who have purchased plots to apply, uh, what what I will do is, is that I will create a list, and some of us are going to be designated according to our area of interest on a specific area for us to do research in. So you can research for as on like a medical center. If you are a nurse, you can pick your skill set or what, what have you and Start doing research on that. So when it's time for us to build a medical center, you will be prepared. You will be ready to share information with the rest of the group to get us going and moving forward. So that's what this email is for, is to keep our minds going. Uh, iron shop is iron. So if we're communicating together and we're working together, then Garvey Town can be successful. Uh, but that's pretty much uh, it. So please... The Garvey Town landowners, please check your email. This email was sent out April the 25th, about three days ago. So please check your emails, and your subject line will say, Attention, Garvey Town landowners. So please make sure that you check your emails for that and reply uh, back as stated with your name, your email address, and the area of interest. And this information is needed in order for me to list everybody in their area of interest because I want you to be comfortable in whatever area that you would uh, like to uh, volunteer your time and your energy towards. Uh, now, this does not exclude uh, others who are not Garvey Town landowners yet. And I'm saying yet because hopefully you all, whoever's on the call, will be coming on board as well. Um, it's just to all of us collectively that's already there is just to get us going um, and, and move forward in the right direction. So uh, that's all I have for right now, uh, for money, unless you want me to elaborate on anything else. Uh, that, is it, uh, that was it. Uh, appreciate it. Um, so once again, family, um, we're going to be sending out emails and things. It's all, everything we send out is going to say Garvey Town. So look at it and uh, just open it up and, you know, trying to get those of us to, 
you know, when information like this is being sent out, I know people get lots of emails, um, but uh, look out for the ones for Garvey Town so we can just keep in touch and keep in communication. Uh, we also have this uh, Facebook uh, page here, and you can just always just uh, share information also. But uh, definitely make sure that you read what conference call that we have, because we have two different conference calls and we have different things. Like, so things may be relevant to people who are traveling with us for tours, and some people are looking to do uh, investment, and some people are looking to do both. But um, you know, just uh, take your time, family, and just look through these information. Uh, that's the only way we can get this done. And uh, what, as I say that, let me see who else we have. Uh, uh, Jonathan, are you still here? Yes, sir. So I'm here. Greetings, family. All right, Can anyone hear me? Uh, give me a second, Jonathan. Uh, Yakisha, thanks. Uh, let me uh, meet you back, and um, I'll just open back up uh, for you to share some more information later. All right, uh, greetings, Jonathan. Uh, go ahead. Uh, if you can just uh, let people know how you connected with uh, Garden <coughs> Town and um, with the vision and the things you have for us as far as um, making this project work. Yes, yes. Uh, greetings, family. This is your brother, uh, Kofi, brother Kofi Jonathan Hill. Uh, I received my uh, Ghanaian day name uh, while on the, the tour in uh, November of 2018. Uh, I... I came across uh, Omani's channel uh, over three years ago. Actually, I say four years ago, um, and was greatly interested. Uh, I was involved in a, a number of different organizations, uh, different Pan African uh, move, uh, movement organizations, and uh, actually had Bomani on one of my radio shows, uh, and then got more and more interested, and uh, finally uh, made the commitment to go. Uh, in the uh, past November uh, 2018 tour, and it was absolutely wonderful. Um, it met and exceeded all of my expectations, um, and just you know, just further uh, promulgated me into go wanting to go to Ghana and wanting to not only repatriate but to build help build a community uh, on the continent of our ancestors. And I think it's one of the most important things that we could do. And I uh, personally believe it's one of the highest honors that we can have. So um, that's just something that I'm keeping in mind and just want to get more and more involved to take this movement, this thing that we're doing more seriously. Um, now, you know, I, I personally saw the, the uh, community that we have set up um, <clears throat> there uh, in Ghana, uh, Derby Town, and we basically... Um, we have a work cut out for us, but we have a, we, 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 we have the land there, the necessary uh, people in place to make this something, to make this thing a reality. So, um, my vision for it, I, I see it as we, we start small, we build as we grow. So we start with the small group that we have, and we continue and, and perfect uh, our own areas of interest, our own skills of interest. And, 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 and build the basics of the, of the community, whether that's with the agriculture, that's the, the residential spaces, the commercial spaces that we have. We build and excel in, in, in that first. And then, you know, the educational spaces, we take that and then we grow from there. And it's, it's going to be, uh, we're talking about eventual nation building and building our own state. You know, that's going to be something that could be possibly multi-generational. So, it, it's, it's not something that we could just think about ourselves or just be short-sighted. We have to think about the future, and that could, you know, either mean bringing some of our, our seed, our children. Uh, that could mean, you know, further recruiting other Africans from the diaspora. It could mean, you know, other people picking up the steam that we've left our imprint on. It can also mean um, intermarrying with the continental Africans that are already, you know, there you know, within the vicinity of Glory Town or, or what have you. So it, it, it's a, a, a multi-pronged approach in my in my vision. Um, and it's, it's, again, something that, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be a part of. So that's all I have to say. All right, I uh, appreciate uh, Brother Kofi. Appreciate yeah. you. Uh, so I'm glad you came to the journey and everything. And, you know, like you and I talked about yeah. uh, on the radio show and talk about 
process of what we have to go through to get all of this done and worked out. And as you can see, you, you've been a part of that process. And one of the first okay. process and most important thing that you did was that uh, you put your money where your mouth is and went to the motherland. And then you know, right. once you went there and you liked what you saw, you put, you, know, you put your money down on some land and now you have a commitment into you know, working with a community of people, build a community from the ground up. You know, so, you know, just, just you know, letting people know that um, that's the process and, you know, and it's just that simple and, and, you know, none of us are rich in, in that situation and, and, and I know your level of commitment because I know how hard you've been working and doing all kinds of things to make sure everything work out. But, um, you know, all of us have to make a significant amount of uh, sacrifices to pull this off. You know, it has, been it has been labeled as impossible based on all of the people that have talked down to me since, like, 2003, 2004. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, that's not, you know, that, that is the greatest motivation. But at the same time, too, it's, uh, it makes too much sense. And when we really listen, look, read all, when we go back to looking at all, looking at all the videos and conscious videos and reading all the books and, you know, and everything, you know, it's basically, the information is basically telling you what it is that, you know, we need to organize ourselves and build what we need to build in Africa. And I get that, especially from, you know, Marcus Garvey and Malcolm X, Ch Chancellor Williams. Uh, Dr. Clark, and even though some of uh, our ancestors never made it to the continent, you know, we are the ones that have been blessed to give the information, and now we're at a time where no one is stopping you from getting on jet planes. As a matter of fact, you know, these, you know, these folks who own these uh, airline companies, they, you know, they're just trying to fill seats. Um, we, you know, we're in a situation where, you know, we just have to follow a certain process, and that's what I told people that... Uh, Put you know we put our resources in front of us and led by example and the same thing here with Garvey Town you know I got my mother my younger brother and sister you know we all have a plots together um, and you know for the first time we've, we've been able to do that and you know so, so sometimes we just gotta you know keep positive and keep in union and the biggest thing is as long as we keep in union it, it, things things work out it's when people start falling apart uh, so. Uh, we've seen the first say, phase of situation that may have happened in Garvey Town, uh, where, you know, where you, they didn't have all the support. So now we have seen that, and we have seen it still survive. So, you know, our best bet is to make sure that we put more of our resources towards that. So, looking for more folks like yourself. And the last thing we, we we even talked about uh, yesterday, Jonathan, is that we have to recruit uh, or reach out to more people. But uh, right now we're in a building state, so we need people, uh, architects, building background, construction background, uh, that are part of the project. Because ultimately, the ideal thing is to get more of us involved in, uh, in, in, in much more the, the later part of the other things that need to be done. Because we know it takes a while to organize uh, all the skill sets and things like that. And like Yakisha was saying, the best thing for us to do is to build that energy that way when things are finally in place and we, we can move and we can do certain things. We can set up because we set out to get the tower in place there in, at Garvey Town. Uh, we set up to just create a bunch of options. So the, the best thing of it is, you know, we move in a certain sequence. Uh, so that's where we're at. And also, uh, uh, Jonathan, you, you saw the, uh, uh, the updates on the pictures uh, on Facebook or WhatsApp uh, with the land being cleared and you can repeat that one more time, Bobana. I can hear you. Yeah, I'm saying that you, you saw the pictures and things that we uploaded this month as far as the progress of the land and everything, and one of the final that, that, what you thought of it since you were there when we were driving around, we was like it was like a jungle. <laughs> was like, <laughs> right. I saw the I saw the, the the clearing, and I mean I'm just really proud. We're getting down to the nitty gritty of tearing down and, and clearing the land. I really think that's the first step. Yeah, you know, the energy of us, you know, us together, you know, d did that. Right, right. That energy, that energy created that, and to see that, you know, we're going to put that together with our site plans and then the individual building plans. You could see a concept go from just a, a wooded area to being something that's, you know, a full-blown community with what we want to do with our own agenda. You know, completely separate, it's our own infrastructure. Uh, and, you know, our own things set in place. So I think it's, you know, really important that we maintain that energy and, and uh, you know, further further push it. Exactly. You know, you, you, you're a Marine. It's kind of going out there in the mission, every, and, and, you know, you have to keep mm -hmm. on advancing to defeat the enemy, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then the, the, the funny thing about it is you do it, you do it, you do it in buddy pairs. You work together. Yeah, or, you, or, you, or let me rephrase it: to accomplish a mission. I don't want to put out bad things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's what we're doing. Uh, we're advancing on that uh, situation, and um, I understand that you now that you know there's going to be casualties, and some people may be non-believers and doubters, and that's understandable. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Right. Uh, I've you know I've been there in Ghana, so I've I've seen what you know I've seen things you know I've seen a, I've seen a lot of things you know we've been we've been good but you know a lot of those things can be prevented uh, the basic small things that goes on there because for me it's the most peaceful place I've ever been I mean I've been to a lot of places in the world and Ghana is just paradise the roots and the culture but you know wherever you are you know there there's always an underworld of situations and you know. So, you know, it's right. a simple situation. Um, you know, we have the philosophy of rolling deep. So, strength in numbers. And that's the only way I've ever proceeded this being this anywhere uh, once I leave here. Um, right. and, so, and with that, um, you're, you're fine. So, I'm telling everyone that the community area is safe, that area especially. And we will uh, protect the zone and we will have military organized oh, yeah. out to make sure that everybody feels safe and I tell people again Ghana is not a dangerous country but uh I was gonna say it's about mindset too. But it's a definitely about mindset. No matter when you whether you think you're safe or not safe, you always have to take protective measures to uh, to be put in place regardless. So that means we're gonna have site security, we're gonna have you know, site security. Talk about how we want that done, that's amongst us. But we must have, you know, site security whether there's people doing some type of p- patrols or people on uh, watch or on guard, there's always going to be people that are going to be looking after the interests and the, the welfare of our, you know, everyday Africans that are, are doing their skills and interests so that others don't have to be involved with that. And personally, I think that's one thing I definitely want to be involved with. Absolutely. You know, that's me. Along with, like, the urban planning, I'm sure I have that background. And <clears throat> right now I'm, I'm getting into trucking. So I'm gonna definitely have that background, but uh, I'm I'm not gonna forget, you know, how to how to protect you. So, um, you know, that that definitely has to be at the forefront of whatever you're doing. So we can't take any chances with anything, you know. But it, it generally is it's a safe area. It's it's uh, undeveloped, you know. From what I saw, it's a it's a lot of opportunity for development, you know. So we don't have I don't think we, we don't have anything to worry about. Yeah, absolutely. And then when you do your research on all these things, you made sure you get the best area. And I literally feel out of the, 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 the whole 12 years I've been here, this has been the best area we have came up on. I mean, the, the beautiful thing about it, you know, the beach is about 15 to 20 minutes, um, you know, depends on traffic. Um, the, the first access of the first beach, but there's, you know, you have, you know, you have that environment. You're not too close to the beach and you're not far away from the beach, you know. And mm-hmm. uh, you're right there by the main road and you just, you know, the whole property is green, so that should tell us one thing. You know, things yeah. grow there. You know, the worst thing is to go get some land and it's just been dead forever. You know, you, you know, you, you know, you know, as we see from when we first went there, that's the beautiful thing of, of dealing with a project from the ground up. We saw just all the trees, and then we see cut down, and we go back now and we plant all the trees, mango trees, orange trees, apple, guava, you know, Mm-hmm. Uh, hockey trees, you know, just any kind of trees you can think of, you know, you can literally make that place, that, that whole 300 acres into a tropical paradise. You have people with different, you know, eco-friendly, sustainable homes all over the place and blending them with just different types and making everything look structured and nice. You know, it's, you know, it's the, our, our paradise as a people, our getaway to where we put enough things in place to where we don't have to do what we do here, having to get up and work. 50, 60 hours a day driving, some, some of us driving one hour to work. Right. It, in the, into the indoctrination school system. And we do all kinds of things. Uh, you know, so in right. our life to where we can actually live somewhere and work on the property also because there's a business and commercial district mm. uh, layout. There's an entire school. So even Mr. Omar Johnson, when he figured it out, can come there and build one, right. of, his, one of his imaginary schools. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Let me jump. <laughs> Let me jump. No, I'll build one. Hey, of man. 
you know, but but seriously, so, so there's a lot of people have been promising a lot of things uh, about what you know, some of my business partner. I'm reaching out to them. I was like, I've, I've sacrificed 12 years of my life for you know, this for many mm-hmm. parts of my life, so we can just be focused and be dedicated to this. And here we are. We have pulled it off the impossible. So now that we have the land to build anything we need to build, it's 300 acres, 300 plots only covered just a small part of the the property. You know, so mm-hmm. so yeah, so yeah, so seriously. Anyone, you know, even, you know, even, you know, Umar Johnson, and he wanted to build a school there, that's what it's there for. And, you know, I'm reaching out to the African diaspora, uh, in America especially. You know, we have all kind of people here that, that can do a little bit of everything. You know, so this would be our 300, you know? Right, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at it. This is like a, a, a chance and an opportunity for us to... Uh, you know, wipe the wipe the slate clean and create our own destiny in our own space. I mean, personally, I don't see it as just a place where you go on for a retirement or a getaway community. That's not how we should be looking at this thing. We're looking at it as something that we're in deftly, you know, building. We're we're constructing. We're developing. It's it's something where we're producing productive Africans. You know what I'm saying? Something completely different from what is happening in today's Yoruba society here. And, you know, in, in the hells of North America and, and the Western world, we're, we're creating something completely different, creating productive Africans. And you see it with our own educational system. We're going to see it with our own uh, different, you know, skills and interests. So, um, you know, yeah, that's something I didn't even think of, you know, even as an urban planner that we're already off grip. We're going to have the who live, work, play, or what have you. We're going to have that balance already, you know, set. Just because of the nature of the, of the community, it's gonna be 300 acres. You won't have any highways. You won't have any, you know, long traffic to work or anything like that. It's gonna be, you know, full-on work, you know, together mode, and um, exactly. you know, something completely like, different from here. Absolutely, and then the people gonna educate yeah. our children are, are us. You know, what I'm saying the people that are, you know, we're yeah. in our fields, and we should have that confidence yeah. uh, for those of us who have survived in these uh, different careers, because. You know, you know, we all been told about America and, and America, and you know you got to get a good career. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. Now that we have mastered that in these careers, and some of us like myself and you, we have several careers. You know. So <laughs> yeah. 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 So we, we put it together, man, and it's a beautiful marriage. Uh, what I want to uh, also do is um, let me mute you, and I'm gonna open things up for questions. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, before I do that, let me go through a few things. Family, the documentation for uh, Garvey Town, um, any one of us that's on Facebook, just type in Garvey Town 201 word, and then you'll see a group page come up and click on it, and then I'll add you. Uh, the Garvey Town uh, Facebook group page, um, this is one of the few things that we have out there um, that we decided to put together. It's just uh, put together all of us on there. So Brandon Rogers is also on there. And uh, so you can literally just reach out to some of the people just on you know, Facebook and no, we're all, since we're all in the same group, once you open it up, you'll see everybody's uh, information. And also, um, when you get there, there's uh, lots of pictures and videos just on the stream itself. Uh, that's to give you just as much documentation as far as all of the things that we talk about, because uh, everything that I talk about, I like to just share the documentation where it's at. Uh, so if I talk too fast or too slow or sound like accents or if you don't hear me clearly, you know, you can follow the documentation also. Uh, so, um, there's also um, 90 something, uh, there's also 100 and something different pictures uh, that's uploaded so you can click on photos and in those photos uh, you're going to see a, the videos also. Um, so that's uh, another way to access it uh, on, the, uh, on the Facebook group page for Garvey Town. And the other page uh, that we have is on my YouTube page, so it's youtube.com forward slash Omani2007. So once you get to my uh, YouTube page, you're going to scroll down and you're going to see a few playlists. Um, you're going to see Ghana, November, 2018 tour highlights, which does have the Garvey Town videos in there, but scroll down below and you'll see videos on Garvey Town community in Ghana. So this is conference calls. This is um, uh, Garadina, uh, the project developer of Garvey Town sharing his introduction, driving us around the property. Uh, this is me connecting with a few people talking about the concept of Garvey Town. Uh, so uh, these are the videos that are there that give you full clarity also. Uh, so we're just trying to provide a line of documentation consistently 
um, as we worked with this project from the ground up and that's one of the things I was explaining to um, uh, some of our folks uh, at Garvey Town that um, you know these things I'm fine with doing you know, I have an office set up to where I get all of these things done this on a quick scale and, uh, uh, and you know I can handle the the phone calls um, and you know the emails and everything you know this what I do as a business person as a business administrator so I was telling them that uh, that's what we'll do because all of these things are necessary um, um, I don't exactly like to sit around playing on my phone all day long with plan the message but it's not about that it's about having communication and consistent communication when you're trying to build something serious so all of this you know we we'll put a lot of time into it uh, so we're asking people to look at information jot down questions and let's have serious conversation and for those who are in the Atlanta area or you're passing through you're more than welcome to come here call me communicate with me and this we'll set an appointment up and as soon as you come here my office is open you'll see all of our Africa tours business stuff and you know, I have a presentation set up we just go through everything in books and and things like that that's like a real travel tours investment uh, office that I built uh, you know out of my uh, townhouse uh, so it's um, and you know, perfect uh, neighborhood to do business and everything so it's you know, we're here, we're focusing and doing business. So me and Jonathan was here, and we worked on a lot of things for the tours and everything, and you saw the development of what we were doing at Garvey Town because you was editing the initial paperwork. You know, so that's how new this is, to us, and this is how far we have gotten, and we're proud to say that we can make progress happen in Africa. A lot of times we feel like everything is slow, which is what I always complain about. But at the same time, to us working together and working certain angles, we can get things done. Uh, so check out the videos the pictures, read the details on our website africaforafricans.org uh, once you click on the Garvey Town link and um, the goal is to just build more but that's more than enough we feel for everyone to get started so now family let me uh, open up um, is anyone that's traveling with us on the tour or have been to Garvey Town and got plots that have any questions or does anyone in general this um, Press star six to unmute yourself and give your name, uh, where you're calling from, and your question. How you doing? My name is Kevin Miller. All right, greetings, are Kevin. Uh, Guy, did your question? Yes, um, I'm from the Washington D.C. area, and um, had questions about how many plaques am I able to buy, and uh, what the tour that you guys have it going on because I just received the information I've been going through it over the last past couple of days and kind of interested in the tour so I want to know about the tour and I want to know how many up to how many plaques can I buy it's one plot per person and also um, if you're in front of your have you seen have you looked at all the information on the Garvey Town link on the website um, I, I received the email from um, someone that put me onto the information but I, I don't went through all these documents and the documents I had um, it's about the it just tell me about the land ownership agreement and all that type of stuff like that but um, I didn't really go through the link that you guys were just telling me about and I'm about to get into that now yeah that's yeah that's what you have to um, it, it's one plot uh, per person and um, what was your other question let's get the tour. Um, oh, the tour. Yeah, once you get on the website, you have to click on the tour link uh, to Ghana. Um, it's a full Roots and Culture tour for May and December. Um, and then okay. you get dates, the itinerary, and all those uh, details. And then you can just reach out to me and we can talk about it. And then uh, sometimes then we have right there on the same YouTube page, there's different highlights. And um, below the video for Garvey Town is Africa Tours and Investment Conference Calls. You know, so you can just you know get up to speed with those things and be a little more clear because a lot of those things are in detail. But I don't know if you have um, another question, and then um, what's the YouTube page one more time? I'm going uh, through it now. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash Bomani2007. And then if you have anything with our website, once you're on our website. You go down right below the main menu and you see YouTube, Facebook, uh, 
Instagram and other links. Okay. That's pretty much all I need. Thank you. Right, excellent, Don. Um, and this, um, when you get a moment, you just send me a message or you can uh, text um, text me your information and I'll reach back out to you. And I'll text it to so which information? To this number here? Uh, no, the, um, if you, whatever email you got, it has my number on it. It'll say Bomani, Tayamba, Bomani. Okay, okay. 404 uh, 931 9429. So that's my number if you need to text me the information and call me. But uh, usually, what I need is just um, first and last name and email address. Then I can send you uh, in a certain emails and then you, know, you and I could just talk in details. Okay. All right. All right, cool. So, actually, so you got the number? Yes. 4493194429. Right, excellent. That'll work. So appreciate you. So good talking with you, and I uh, look forward to talking back with you uh, later on or tomorrow, so or sometime this week. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All right, family, line is open. Um, press star six to unmute yourself and uh, share with us um, your question, uh, name, and uh, where you're calling from. Hi, Bomani. Uh, this is Andre. Let's just say I'm calling from Atlanta. Um, my question was. Um, uh, is there a, a time limitation as far as if you if you buy a plot of land you're approved then you know uh, to purchase the land is there a time frame where you have to begin building a structure um, as far as uh, you know how long after you complete purchase of the land that you you, you have to is there a must that you have to build uh, within a certain time frame all right cool um, appreciate the question uh, Andre um, it is five years so we basically just want everybody just to float their minds like the first year, get things together, get building plans and things like that together. Then hopefully two, the year two or three people start building in. By five years, a good part of the community is built. And that's why we're focusing on the first 100 plots, trying to just basically just sell all those 100 plots. And we just put our resources together and all the building materials. And everything has come out a lot cheaper. And then just make agreement with a few builders and architects and work it out that way. I know it sounds simple and easy, but in, in that order. And, and in the meantime, I mean, as far as maintaining the property after purchase, is there maintenance uh, fee? I, I mean, of course, you, you wouldn't want to have your neighbor's land overgrown right next to your house and all that. So how? what's the uh, parameters around that type of thing, maintaining your property once you've purchased, between the time of purchasing the property and, and building? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a bunch of things that uh, we, we, our goal is to try to have more of some, more of some community meetings and dialogues, and that's why we have separate okay. groups for those who purchase plots. But our great question, uh, the goal for, um, for that situation is to, just like we're going to assemble a security team, assemble a team of people who are now going to volunteer do landscape and work out, a work out situation where part of what they're doing is volunteer and part of what they're doing is getting paid. Uh, so those situations are, are, are things we have to dialogue with uh, our folks at Garvey Town um, more clearer because they're more into the, the development vision of that. Uh, but as far as us dialoguing and communicating, uh, that's uh, literally the goal. Uh, that way, you know, everything gets cleaned up all the time by a cleaning crew, a landscape crew, and you know, a tow truck crew come around if you t tend to park too many vehicles in your driveway, like my um, neighbor over here. Yeah, but uh, uh, not to be funny with that. But nevertheless, the goal is to, to is to create a whole bunch of uh, opportunities within itself to control, maintain, build, grow, develop the property. And everything gets circulated. You know what I'm saying? We're kind of like the new 21st century uh, black Jews. No? Okay. No? So, so there's, a, there's some type of homeowner's fee that you'll have to pay to keep that maintenance um, going? Yeah, absolutely. And those are things I have to dialogue and, uh, and uh, okay. analyze on. So even I can, you know, there's a lot of things I can give estimates on. Let me just, you know, throw out some estimates out there. Um, you know, so you're looking at um, that could be set to where, you know, we work it out to where it's even... One hundred dollars a year, uh, just to throw some numbers out there. We have internet that you know some people are gonna have to to get, and you know that's looking in the range of like thirty to fifty dollars. 
But what we're also looking to do is coming up with ways where we can build our own resources to where it's not a situation where, you know, you're just paying bills. You know, and some of those things, you know, naturally we don't have all figured out, but we're trying to put our great minds together to even work out ways to where, you know, the power bill is very low. The water bill is based on us creating our own reservoir of water and making it work on the property. And, then, and all of that sounds nice and, you know, simple, but I know it's a lot more work and... That's also why we're just reaching out to some of the best of us who, can, you know, who have been able to get those AKA good jobs and been able to learn a whole lot of skills and build certain things. Uh, so um, that's one way and then everything, there's directions and then we have experts there in Ghana also. So it's just at the point of like trying to recruit people and work these things out. That way we can have like a list of different prices and things like that. And it's something that you know. It's something that all of us are used to already in life. But the goal is, all those bills that we all have to pay and do is to cut those beyond this half. It's just to cut them very small, uh, and so that's why we're trying to do everything in house. But uh, unfortunately, just don't have you know certain direct pinpoint uh, answers that can just like give you certain specific numbers. But we will work on those things. And it's just like even the price of the building of the homes and certain things trying to get our folks there to put things together so we can just have more of those things in place. You know, but, but at the same time, we don't want to wait for all of those things to be completed to start. But we're also letting everyone know that everything, the world that we're building is a world to, of getting away from the world where everything is overpriced. Like, live around sharks, uh, you know, Georgia Power, uh, and these people, the, the, the water supply people down the street. And, you know, it just, that's, that's the world that all of us that have, you know, put our resources and are committed are dedicated to doing. Uh, so even though we don't have, you know, just all the right answers as far as numbers and everything, it's the goal is to get it drastically low for your living expenses and to where we can live a better life because we're literally, you know, in a crippled society to where, and it's maybe a little bit better in America to where after you finish, you know, after you get your paycheck, after you spend certain things, you have a little bit more. Um, some places, you know, you get your money and you don't, you know, it's gone before you go because your payment's low. But the goal is to create opportunities to where we, we can make a living and live a certain quality of life without the stress of just all these figures and money and things like that. Not saying we're trying to get away from, you know, money because, we'll, you know, we'll have our, you know, our business there to where we have people in America and Europe and where they're paying us for services. So I, hope that I, I just have one more. I have one quick question. Um, I, I heard the, the the lady speak earlier, and she mentioned proof of funds. At, w at what point in the process do you have to provide proof of funds to build? Proof of proof of funds to build. Yeah. Uh, Yakisha, you want to answer the question? Can you hear me? Uh yes. Uh, Andre, if you can uh, repeat your question. Yes, I was just wondering at what point in the um, the process um, would you need to provide proof of funds? I heard you mention the proof of funds to build earlier. Um, after you secured the land, um, is that the point where you're ready to build, or uh, what point in the process do you have to provide proof of funds? Okay, brother, uh, that's a good question. Now, on Brendan's uh, website, he doesn't uh, have a specific time uh, for it, and it doesn't necessarily show where you have to provide a proof. It's just that your funds are available and you're ready to go. You're ready to start building. So basically, when you contact uh, Brandon, make your appointment, he will ask all those questions, um, and then he will, or he'll have you do a survey so he can know exactly what it is you're looking for. So basically, you have to own some land in Ghana. You have to show ownership. You can't just bid on anybody's land. And, of course, in order for him to start building, he has to have funds. So those are just the the requirements that he has listed on his website, ownership and then funds so you can start your project. But if you're not ready to start your project, you can let him know, and then he at least he'll have a, a, a estimate of when you're ready to begin building. Okay, thank you. Excellent. Uh, appreciate you, uh, Keisha. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, 
Next person, next question. John from Atlanta. Hey, uh, greetings, John. Uh, go ahead with your question. Hey, uh, based on this email that you sent out on the 24th of uh, April, you have two other builders listed with their email. Is it possible to provide their website if they have one? Uh, they don't have a website. Okay, do they have sample plans that we can look at? Uh, unfortunately, just working on all those things, trying to get people to put prices, sample plans, and things like that together. Uh, so okay. the only person that uh, we can we can clear right now is uh, Brandon Rogers. Yeah, Keisha talked about last week and this week. Uh, so right. he does a lot of different building, and um, I've seen his work from 2006 to up to the last few years. I've seen his work. Um, so you know, we, you know, we can vouch for him. As far as the other two brothers, uh, they are builders, and they, I've seen a few things that they have done, and they're people that I trust more than anything else. I uh, trust, uh, uh, trust their expertise in the country and their knowledge on building, knowledge on, on you know, politics and certain things to get things done. So, you know, you need a lot of different people on your team. So they're there to give more so guidance and everything else, but, uh, and they're going to be working on one or two homes. But the, the things that you're talking about, um, you know, the goal is to, in the next two months is to, you know, when I talk back with everyone is to give people more details because I will be in Ghana for, you know, for a little bit to where I'm going to be meeting with a lot of different people to work all of these things out. I did find another website of some builders in Ghana. I just can't seem to find it right now. But they were selling their plans from anywhere from 1200 to $2,000 just for the plans themselves. Uh, once I find that, I can email it to you, and then you can share it with the rest. All right, yeah, I'll take a look at what they have. Uh, we do have, um, right, so we do have one or two people that we still have to talk to. Uh, but absolutely, anyone there that we can talk to, I'm open to uh, checking them out. Um, also, container homes. But naturally, the other thing that we're looking for is uh, for people who have these different skills that want to be a part of Garvey Town, so we can have more internal people than anything else. Right. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Uh, let me know if you have another question and um, get the next call. Uh, this is uh, Hotep, Brother Hotep in Pittsburgh. Uh, greetings, our Brother uh, Hotep um, in uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, yes, I have a couple of questions. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, the number of lots remaining to be sold? Uh, it's 21 from us, and I want to say about 8 from the actual project developer. Are there any uh, uh, annual taxes on the property? Oh, yes, I have a question. You pay your, um, your property tax. Property tax is estimated to be uh, anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 or 30 to 50 uh, dollars a year. Uh, the goal is to build a full community, and okay. because once you're once you're trying to get 300 acres of land, you have to you have to pay somebody some money. So instead of paying like a million dollars or whatever it would be for that that big property, it was worked out in the uh, the agreement. Um, right now on the website, what we have is a memorandum of understanding and a land agreement. The two most important documents on the list to be clear on. Um, and that just kind of talk about um, the deal that was made. But, um, you know, that's the initial payment for the lot. But uh, the things that we've been talking about is once we get all established, our goal is to take, you know, take over that bill and split it amongst ourselves and along with doing many other things to cut the cost of many, you know, of anything else that needs to be cut, like the things that we need, like electricity, water, and, and so on. Is there any running water on the property? Yes, there's a high pressure main that um, the way it works in Ghana. Once you start building, you draw it in. Every you know, drawing the water, you draw in electricity, but it's not like connected right there on on your actual plot to where you just plug it up. Uh, so that's a part of the whole community development. You, the, the land is all being cleared, and all those things will have to be put in. So part of the money that's being that we're paying for lots, they're using those resources also to, you know, to take care of the infrastructure. So that's a good way to take care of the infrastructure. So there's no streams or ponds on the property? 
Uh, there's small streams of prop there's small streams I've been told but I'm yet to see it because um I'll be back there in a month and my goal is to take pictures and videos of things like that. But uh, no, I've not seen it in anyone's picture but I've been told by the project developer that certain parts of the land does have stream. But the goal is also to you know, you wanna create different you wanna create as much bodies of water in your community as possible. So some certain things we're just gonna have to create man made style. Are there snakes on the property? I'm, I'm poisonous snakes? I'm, I'm absolutely sure it is. It's a jungle. And that's what it looked like and it's not a physical like jungle jungle animals and things, but it's you know, it's I'm sure many things are out there. But um, the goal is once we clear the land and set up and, and plant the trees that we need, is to make sure that, you know, the area is free of dangerous anything. Mm. And uh, do the uh, lot owners have mineral rights, access to the mineral rights on the property so they uh, buy? Oh, absolutely not. The mineral rights belong to all of us, and not just the individual the property they saw. And everything on the property is, you know, Garvey Town is a community, so um, it belongs to the, the people of the community, and we share whatever is on the community. So if um, I struck gold, all of us are rich. Is uh is there a town or or village nearby? Uh yes, uh, the property is surrounded by the different villages in Gomorrah and different uh, small communities and ethnic groups. You know, so it's you're you're about an hour to two hours away from the main city Accra, and mm -hmm. then other city Cape Coast. You're the same thing too. So you're about a you're in between two main cities, and usually when you're in between two main cities, that's you you get stuck with the the, the lack of development. Uh, so, but as you, but as soon as you start going out 10, 15 minutes, you'll see a different civilization. So the good thing about that is that we have land and we have an area in its natural form to work with, which is just incredible. Uh, and we don't have to make it because when you step outside of the, the property, everything it, it's kind of going back to the concrete jungle mi mindset, it, you know, of what we see in like New York City. Uh, so, we literally, we have a great opportunity to build it as tropical as possible and preserve as many trees, not preserve, but plant as many trees and, you know, keep it in, in its nature form. Uh, so, uh, you know, now, what you can see villages. Okay. Now, do you need a four-wheel drive vehicle to access the property? Uh, no, but I did see a uh, crazy Prempe um, on one of the on, on a few of the um, pictures. I uh, mentioned that he he drove his uh, vehicle there, but no, you don't need an special. You can take a regular vehicle there. Okay, one one last question, just in question. Sure. Um, my wife and I could each buy a lot adjoining lots. Yes, absolutely. That's um, for couples. They can definitely do that. Some couples just get one lot. Some decide to get two separate lot. But the you know, based on the paper we read and based on the confirmation we get, it's uh, it's uh, one plot per person. So you can literally do that. Cause like right now, I have, you know, my family of four. We have our four plots, and you know, we're going to be doing you know certain certain things. Uh, you know, so the goal is to not limit people on certain building. So whatever you decide to do, you just you know you have to just let us know because at the end of the day we still have to run it by the project developer, so he can be clear on it and you know, he will give us the final saying if it's you know, it's appropriate or not. But um, yeah, there's nothing in the paperwork I've said anything about us joining property and joining buildings or anything, Cause, because that's exactly what I plan to do and I explain that to, uh, to them in the get go. Okay, well, thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. Samani? Uh, greetings. Yes. Uh, greetings to you. This is Renita and Kevin McKinney from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, greetings, Samani. Thank you. Uh, we've been um, researching for a while. Uh, we won't be able to make it to Ghana until probably August of next year. We'll be going to Senegal this year in January of next year. However, we're very interested uh, in the project 
would you discourage us um, in moving forward with purchasing a plot before we come there? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Um, that's how some of us are doing it, and what we're doing, we're representing them, so we're showing them everything we have. The only thing we ask is us. For, for those who are going to do that, uh, to read through everything, because everything literally started with those of us, 10 of us, that, 10 out of the group of us that went there in November, we decided to just lock it and take advantage of uh, the, the opportunity. Uh, but now, I have a few people that's come with me that's, that have done that, and a few people that's planning to get there. But the good thing about that is that your paperwork will be done, your money will be in, and you can actually go there and see your name, your money, and, and see your lot. Um, and so that's one advantage of it. But the main thing is, that, you know, I would say go ahead and at least fill out the paperwork and get that started and just, you know, keep processing the information and thinking about that decision. Okay. And one other uh, question. Um, I, I read somewhere, I, I, I'm not sure if it was on the website or if I saw it on one of the YouTube videos that six bedrooms were available. Um, the young lady that was speaking before, she said something about a three bedroom up to 1250 square feet, I think. Um, is there an option for a six bedroom? I'm sure, I'm sure it is. Um, um, did you get the website? I can repeat it uh, for you if you want to check it out. Uh, yes. It's uh, migratingculture.com. Okay. Uh, Thank you. And um, you can you know you can reach out to them, but um, it's you know basically what they are do doing is they're trying to give you a few different options. Everyone is trying to give you a few different options, but ultimately, uh, whatever you decide and whatever you want, um, their their goal is to modify that for you. I'm not saying that you know we're encouraging people to build mansions and things like that, uh, but and if you want something with a little bit more room, absolutely, um, they can do that for you. Okay, and I have one last question, and then I think my husband has a question. Sure. Uh, our goal is to uh, come there and open up um, a holistic type um, restaurant. Are there opportunities in that area? What we're looking to do is all facets, all different aspects of life that we usually just live in. We're looking to build a community that resembles that. So whether it's a barber shop, whether it's a health and wellness center, whether it's a fitness center, um, all those things, you know, bowling alley, movie theaters, those are the things that you literally want to do. So the um, only thing we're encouraging people to do is do everything in Garvey Town. Um, and, but, you know, but naturally, you know, you can, you know, the rest of Ghana is out there, but um, we're trying to keep everything enclosed. That way we, you know, build a system with uh, certain resources and get things uh, done by the people that has, you know, that's a part of the property. And, and, and that okay. way, you know, take it more serious. It's, you, know, it's more of, you know, it's more of like our investment for our future. You know, we're building things that our children are going to use and enjoy. And, you know, we're putting our stamp and our name on it, saying that we built this as a people for us and our children in the future. Yes. Okay, and, and I said that was my last question, but I, oh, sure, I, 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 okay. The plots for uh, businesses are the prices the same, and are those plots available for purchase now? Uh, they're not available now. Initially, what I was told was yes, they are the same price. So I put residential and business, but also um, it's just um, it's one of the, the many conversations we have to talk about. Okay. And the goal is to make it easier because um, the first, uh, Garadina, the project, project developer, explained to me that they're initially looking to get, um, you know, get money ahead of time to build a strip. And then they said that didn't really work out. So they turn around and say, you know, we just can sell regular plots and then people can build what they want to build on there. So that was the last thing that we talked about. But I have some better ideas for them uh, that way. You know, one person, because unless you really d need something big, you know, most of us don't need that size for business. So, you know, we're going to have a conversation on how we can, a few of us can come together and, and, you know, maybe get one plot and 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 build a small strip and things like that. So um, that's another thing that you just don't have direct answer for or direct update, but it's definitely in the works. Okay. Okay, and here's my husband. You may hear a little noise just a second. 
Hello, how are you? Kevin McKinney speaking. A little rough. Uh, I'm doing well. Go ahead. Uh, how are you, brother? Uh, my question is uh, about solar power. Uh, you saying self-sustainable? Will solar power be used in order to power the buildings, homes, and so forth? Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's the most recommended option to buy a solar package. Uh, we went to one of our um, a person that we know uh, home, and you know he has a, a system, and he just explained that it, it just, it's been working for the last few months. But uh, that's one option, and you can connect that with uh, wind power, or you can just get the regular city power. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have a solid like game plan to where we where we can just build a power station and then offer people power ahead of time. So that's what individuals are doing. They're just getting their own power. A solar system and getting their own um, their own septic tank, but ultimately the goal is to build a you know you know build a system away for the whole community away from the the septic tank system. But so you know these are the initial ways we're starting, but you have that future okay. option. Okay, so, but possibly in the future there would there would be a power station built for the community. Exactly. Okay, thank you. And those are the things that we're literally going to get together and talk about uh, once we get a lot more people locking and we just build a little stronger. Okay. All right, family, the line is open. Press star six to unmute yourself for the next question. Hello? Uh, greetings. Um. Hi, it's Jackie. Um, I was basically... Um, thinking you you made a statement about individuals contributing or letting you guys know what they can do what I just kind of heard that part I didn't um, what is it that you guys are looking for we're building a 300 plot the 300 acre community and all facets of life um, as to run that community and one of the main things right now is people who can Bill homes, people who are architects and people who are just well versed in different world of construction and to build the future of uh, the uh, community and then you know you have a school district so you need people with you know different background education medical center and so on so everyone that makes up the community will communicate and talk and com and commit to certain things. And all of those things that we commit to and do it all, everything that reduces the cost of life and living. Um, people will enjoy farming, can plant as much much food trees as possible. You know, so it's just something like that we're building. Okay. Um, I don't know if you had answered this question already, but I know there was three segments of plot sizes. And I wanted to know, based on the plot sizes, the amount of bedrooms possible within those lot sizes. I know it starts off 70 by 100, 100 by 100, and then I don't remember, I think it's like 120 by, or a little higher by 100. Like, how many bedrooms or what style home they can be built? I mean, that's a big lot, you know. You live, you live in America, with us. look around where you are. Um, most of the lots, maybe about 0.20 of an acre. These lots are about 0.25, to point up to about 0.35 of an acre, so these are big lots, you know, bigger than what we have here. So um, you can build five bedroom houses and things like that, but unless you building it for, you know, unless you have a whole family like that building, we're just recommending people build smaller and more efficient and things like that. But yes, you can build a big house on, on any of those lots, but if you can build a big house, I definitely recommend the 100 by 125. Okay, that would be the largest one that you're offering, right? Oh, yes, that's correct. That's a large lot. Okay. Um, now, with the building, I know, um, you know, obtaining the, the land, and I, I thank you for actually going out and spearheading and, and thinking about, you know, thinking about us uh, before we even realized that the opportunity was available. Um, my My next question would be, when you purchase your land, you know, because you make it very easy, the, the documents are there, as long as the, the money is paid and the paperwork is in, is in, everything is, you know, moving smoothly. My next concern is, 
to build because um, I, I just, I, you know, I've been hearing, and I'm not trying to do, be a damper, don't, don't get me wrong. I've heard of some situations where individuals have, you know, maybe they didn't make the best, you know, the best decision or they, they weren't fully um, aware of what they can and cannot do. When it comes down to building, um, are we, those who go and invest in this property, are we going to be charged based on American standard of building, or are we going to be charged like, you know, uh, like another Ghanaian that lives down the street and she wants to build a property or he wants to build a home, are we going to be charged, you know, more because we're coming in from the Americas? Because the, to buy the land, it's very affordable. You know, don't get me wrong. I mean, we can save it up, you know, and, and, and pay for this land. But then when we have to think about building, you know, um, and I'm not talking about building a mansion. I'm just saying just getting something started because in that part of the world, most people build, you know, maybe two bedrooms and a bath um, in the open area, and then they build on as they go. But I just want to make sure that the understanding of what's needed to begin that is attainable, because it doesn't make sense for me to buy land and I can't afford to even build on it. Uh, yes, yeah, so the price would be based on um, not Ghanaian standards, um, but the, the goal is to bring it below the American price standards. Um, unfortunately, you know, we, who are, we are who we are. Uh, so. No one is going to, people are going to always look at that. And uh, the fact that, um, but the goal is to do everything internal. So uh, Gary Dinagambe has been there on the property. Uh, so we're going to be, he's going to be orchestrating how we can organize for building materials. That way we can order that in bulk. And then he's going to, we're going to have a few people that are amongst us that are going to work out the building. Uh, so. The goal is to make it as closer to the local cause as possible in that situation since we're more in control of it. Can I, can I just ask what would that look like? Um, originally, we talk, we're talking about sustainable homes, um, uh, three bedroom, two bathrooms from thirty to $50,000 based on materials. So that's why we have to get a cost of uh, material prices. Um, and so the only person that we have prices on is still Brandon Rogers from MigratingCulture.com. Uh, his website has you know, a certain price uh, structure from 10000 to 50000 And the 10000 represents you know, a small home, uh, like a studio home. Uh, and the 50000 represents more of you know, your uh, four-bedroom. So that's the range that we're dealing with. But however, when you look out there in Ghana and you look for a standard uh, cement concrete uh, home, then you start seeing the prices in these um, estates for a hundred thousand dollars to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, but what I also look at that is the fact that a lot of things are in that price, including the infrastructure that was built and all the money as far as the interest they have to pay and different things that they have to go through. Uh, so the good thing about this project is everything is just corporate economics and it's just a small, slow build. Uh, but you know, to where we can work certain things out and then we also put more of our resources together so a lot of things are getting done. So the deals we'll make is with you know, whoever are the builders and we'll just work some deals out and the people we get the materials from and uh, that will reduce the cost. So again, we don't have certain exact costs beyond the cost we're given but that's a part of the package of the cost factor that uh, we're working on and I'll be working on when I get there in Ghana and, and when I stay back in early June. Okay, I have two more questions, and I promise I'm done. Um, so I, you mentioned about the cement. <clears throat> now, what if there was a possibility of utilizing the clay dirt that is there on the land already and then incorporating, um, like, every other section? Because I, I actually watched somebody build their home like that 
with the bags. I don't remember. I don't know the full, the full terminology, but um, they they actually didn't even use the bags. They actually used the actual clay, and in between the clay, they actually used the cement. And once they were able to build a wall, it had such a beautiful decor where they didn't have to paint the wall if they didn't want to because it just had that real, um, I, I don't even know the term, but it, it looked like beautiful art. Um, is there a possibility, and I know you said it, it could range from anything, actually, it depends on what you want is what, you know, drives the cost of the home. But if it's possible, if the person wanted to do something more eco-friendly, because that was one of the things they talked about, having that mixture, it was more eco-friendly. So when it was cool outside, um, you know, or should I say hot, you didn't really feel that hot because it was kind of like the cooler internal because um, you didn't have to use your air, your AC. You could actually turn your fan on and um, the, the the materials actually weathered the weather and you can, you know, don't have to put on your AC so so high. Um, is there an opportunity to have eco-friendly building options with this, you know, Garvey, you know, Garvey Town? Yeah, that's absolutely that's the only thing that we're pushing. And I uh, talk about mi migratingculture.com. That's the kind of homes that's being built, earth bags, dome style homes. Uh, that's what we naturally recommend. But some people are going to want to build. You know, the regular style homes, which is absolutely fine, but you know, naturally uh, we're living in a world where we're we're pushing for the highest level of sustainability as possible. So we want people to use as much recycled material and use whatever is available in the ground. You know, so um, and that is what ultimately reduces the price, and that's why the range that um, uh, Yakisha gave at for migrantculture.com is what it is because that's his philosophy to use. Uh, he's into the world of eco sustainability. Okay, and what is the time frame? Because if you gave, uh, if it goes up to, it depends, you know. Because I, I don't, I'm not sitting on a, a big pot of money. Um, I'm, I may be able to contribute, say, within six months, twenty five hundred dollars. You know, you know, maybe another six months, thirty five hundred dollars. What is the time frame to actually build? this home you know uh is it is it something that we can build little 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 as long as we're actually building towards the, the goal of completing or is it is it something that um you know it's best to just save all of your money and then you know put twenty five thousand dollars into it and then you know get it completed that way i i, I just want to know because again you know we are living in America, and I'm not one of those fortunate ones that, you know, have a 401k that I can say, yes, I can pull this money out and just, bam, get it done. Um, I have to actually save and work towards this. But I know buying a property is the mo is very important because you want to at least reserve the land. How is the, the building, you know, progression going to yeah, be? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I definitely see where you're coming from. Uh, most of us are in the same situation. Um, but uh, the, the goal is for the first year, which is uh, this year, is for us to organize our building plans, get, get those things, out, get application and take care of all of that, and then work the next five years to build whatever we're looking to build and build it up to where we can live in it in five years. So, um, you know, you work it out to where, you know, you get a foundation build, then you get, you know, walls up, then you get, uh, you know, a roof up, doors and windows, you get certain things inside and then, you know, work it that way. So that's a system that's being created, and I have two of the people that I trust the most, um, you know, Kwabina, uh, uh, Kwabina Baka and Kwesi Prempe, as people that um, I would manage, I would send them what they need, and they're responsible for paying the workers and taking care of certain things. But internally in Garvey Town, like I told you, we're going to put a lot of our resources together and make it cheaper and make it you know, a little simpler to get done. Uh, so it will work out in the same factor of what you're looking for, um, you know, you know, th that five-year plan. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Uh, go ahead. This is Akisha. I just wanted to uh, speak uh, um, basically I just wanted to respond a little bit to uh, what the young lady just asking um, earlier for as um, 
four is um, migrating culture. Now, uh, Brendan Rogers has a survey, and I have completed his survey. And within the survey, he has three different payment options. So uh, what I can do is is that uh, let me give you all my email address. It's Takesha T A K E S H A thirty three at gmail dot com because I have that that survey that he sent me on the messenger, but I haven't been able to locate it on his website. So what I can do is, is that if you shoot me an email or you can shoot Bo Money an email. And then I can shoot that survey over to you, and you can go through the questionnaire, answer the questions, uh, and you'll be able to see the uh, the different options of the patent plan that he has. Uh, so that will be something that you can work with, and um, also be able to see the different uh, the projects. Um, also, um, for it's a technique that you mentioned about the clay and the concrete. That sounds like a rammed earth technique. It sounds like one of them, but there are a lot of different uh, eco-friendly uh, techniques that Brandon Rogers does use for migrating culture. Uh, one is the, uh, the earth bags, where you put the clay dirt inside of the bags. Another one is the traditional um, uh, mud bricks. Then you have the uh, clay bricks that they use, and then you have the regular uh, country cement uh, bricks that he used. And so uh, if you go to his website, you'll see a host of uh, information. There's, this is there in detail of him. And he's also he's providing pictures and he's providing step-by-step -step phases as he goes through the project. I do know with uh, Brandon, he does a down payment. So you do a down payment to start your initial uh, beginning and then he has another payment where you start in different phases. So that kind of can be worked out with Brandon as you go through the process. So if you would like to shoot me or Bo Money an email, I can get that survey sent out so you can go through the process of uh, filling it out and you'll be able to see for yourself uh, what questions that Brandon may be asking for and the uh, option plans that he has. He has three different option plans that he listed on there. So, uh, but I think uh, a lot of that for is the down payment and when you'll be able to uh, for us to build a start in the plan, I think that's something that you would pretty much have to uh, come into agreement with with your builder. So that's all I had to say, Bo Money. Thank you. Absolutely, I appreciate you. Thank you for the clarity. All right, um, we have a few people open. Um, Hello, bye-bye. Kevin McKinney is speaking once again. I have one more question. Uh, when my wife and I do purchase a property, will uh, we receive a land deed for the plots purchased? Uh, what you receive is I uh, receive a receipt from my office for the money that we collected for you. And uh, Garvey Town is going to give you their paperwork as far as a land shared agreement, basically a shared agreement that this is your land and you're part of Garvey Town and your name and your plot number. They're also going to submit paperwork to the Lands Commission so you can get um, your land paperwork from there. Uh, and these things are similar to what would be called a deed or indenture. Uh, so that's the other process. And that part takes a little longer. But the initial you get your receipt right away from me in the Garvey Town. You'll get uh, their paperwork. Uh, the goal is to get it to you within uh, a month. And then at the three month mark, you know, you're clear to be built. You're clear to start building. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, perfect. You're welcome. Hey, hey. <clears throat> Brother Bomani, this is Demetrius from Chicago. How you doing? Uh, greetings. Um, uh, greetings. Uh, go ahead with your question. Yeah, I had a three quick questions. I want to. Where are the plots? What's the sizes, and how many can you buy? Uh, it's one plot per person. Okay. And have you seen the details on our website, AfricaForAfricans.org? If not, I can point it to you right now. Um, that way, you can see where the plot sizes are as I explain it to you. Okay. All right. Um, and if you never come, uh, on our getting started page, um, uh, uh, once you're on our website, you know, once you click on uh, the Garvey Town link from AfricaForAfricans.org. 
you have a list of articles, but the last one is called Getting Started. And if you ever gotten an email from us, uh, the Getting Started email, what we have on is a list of the plot size, uh, 70 by 100. Um, that's uh, 640 plus 300, um, 100 by 100, and that's uh, 1,093 plus 300, and 1,360 uh, plus 300, and the 300 is for the administrative uh, process of us taking care for you, and that's the price uh, for the lots and the sizes, and you can only, uh, um, it's one per person, so if you want multiple plots, um, you can get your, you know, another family member to fill it out and you, know, you can represent them and use it for building their house that you're going to use. Okay, that's why I was going to ask if uh, another family member could purchase one. Okay, you, you answered it. Yeah, exactly. I can have, uh, it's a family of four, my, me, my mother, brother, and uh, sister. Just got four plots, so we're going to be using that you know, for our, our, little, our little space. Uh, so that's what most people are doing, um, and you know, it's, it's, it's trying to build a family energy. Yeah, absolutely. We feel like people have more interest and investment if it's them and their family there. Yeah, All right. that makes sense. I'd perfect. I have a few people open. Uh, Divine line is open. Okay, peace. Okay, a um, uh, question I had is in regards to. I'm sorry, I was moving over here. In, in regards to um, working with the uh, brother on the earth forms, I studied that earth form technology. I spoke, I spoke to you a little while ago regarding um, the earth form technology and um, solar energy. Oh, yes, I believe so. Absolutely. Are you guys looking for um, someone someone to work alongside the brother with building, with building those projects? You know, it's definitely building those earth forms takes a lot of energy. Yeah, what we're looking for yeah. is um, we're looking for Garvey Town members who want to be a part of building anything. That's what uh, Yakisha's reaching out to people who are members, and then you yeah. know, it's it's a situation where what the, uh, what the Garvey Town company has set up is to where uh, they want everything done internally. Uh. Yeah, so if I join, which is what I'm aiming to do, um, there will be the ability to work with. Um, um, I guess the construction department, you say? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's what we want. Uh, all of us, you know, we help each other um, do things. You know, like I do different things in technology and business, so my goal is to help whoever I can help, and people help me do things in my home. And it's, you know, back to the, the old way of life, you know, um, us just you know, sharing. So you definitely uh, open up. Uh, Gardena Gamba, him and a few other people are going to be doing th those projects. So when you get a chance to get there and meet them, and that's what we'll introduce you as someone that has that background that want to work. Uh, and, you know, everything is from the ground up, so literally there's nothing like concrete or laid out. So if you're more of the expert in things, you know, you know definitely you can definitely lead a certain initiative. Uh, we're always looking for that. Right, right. And and also the um, the 12... The 12,000 square foot plots. So are those available at this moment for purchase? Uh, yes. Uh, you're talking about the uh, the 100 by 125. Um, that is available. Uh, so what I have is, you know, when you're looking at a site map, it's not easy to understand. So you can always reach out to me uh, by text or email and just request a list of the plot size and the plot, you know, the, the plot size. Uh, so we have a list from 1 to 100, and we have you know, the people who purchase plots and the people who want to stand by on there. Uh, so you know, I can always get that to you. You can see it. Then you can look at the site plan and see where the bigger lots are. But naturally, if you look at it, you see the biggest lots. Those are it right there, 100 by 125. Okay, okay. And, and also, um, the last question. Are there any properties that are more elevated? Is it, you know, um, kind of like on a hill or more elevated properties? Uh, no, you know, um, the whole thing, you know, it, it, it's beautiful, man. The whole thing is, like, literally leveled, leveled to where it's nice and clean and level. There's really, I haven't seen, like, no, like, re no high elevation, at, you know, not even a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. That's one thing I noticed. Um, but I haven't got a chance to look at the entire property. Uh, I will be there next month scoping it out in full details as I stay back in that area for about a week. Uh, so I'll be able to you know, definitely share more of those things on the next call that we have um, uh, in June.
Oh well, this this is actually the last question. Um, I see I see that um, application form online. Um, you also sent me the three the, the three uh, documents with the land agreement, the um, understanding memorandum, and, and the other document. But yeah, those documents as far as, are getting started. So, but the initial one, we, we want to put in the application for um, membership and to be able to purchase. We have to. Um, Fill out that one document that asks for the date of birth, cert, um, cert birth certificate, etc. That's, that's the one to fill out. Yeah. yeah, that's it right there. We're basically getting right to the point which is called getting started. Uh, it has a plot size and prices, and um, you fill out all the paperwork just like you know we show it as an example, and then just email it back to me. And then uh, once you're ready uh, to uh, to get a plot, then I'll send you the list of the plots that are available uh, in a spreadsheet layout. And then you just select what you want. And then uh, once I get your payment, um, the goal is to get that sent over uh, by email. And then um, put your money together with other people and send that over for uh, a wire transfer. And then you know, they'll be start. They'll work on the process that I talked about earlier, getting things organized. Okay, definitely. Thank you, brother. Excellent. Uh, excellent. So, um, can, I just, can, I say, can I just say one thing, real brief, real brief? Sure. Uh, I know I'm, um, I'm going to say this real quick. Um, just, just for the collective family to uh, keep in mind that, um, and I heard you say that before, but my, a lot of people come to the table um, uh, wait, waiting for something to be done for them or, or that the thing is already fully built. You know, but like my mother said, when you when a man marries a woman, you, you want to be able to be with a woman that's, <laughs> that's there for you from the ground up. You know, she's willing to work with you to get to that final level, you know. So I, I just want everybody to kind of have that spirit in their mind as they step to the table, you know, just like the brother and the other brothers and sisters that are doing the work are doing. That's, that's what I want to say, brother. Peace. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely, family. We just have to um, uh, keep it moving forward. As Max, um, and we're in a process where there's no turning back. Uh, this is this, this is it. So, all of us are putting ourselves in that place. And family, the line is open for la for a few more questions. Uh, or if anybody want to say or share anything uh, to the group, uh, anybody who have gotten plots or have been there to Garvey Town. Hey, Bomani, how you doing? This is Ferris, man. Uh, greetings, uh, Ferris. Uh, um, how are you? Uh, go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to know, man, if um, by chance I'm able to get over there during the process of building or before the building. Um, is is there somewhere I can stay, or do I need to find my own? You know, first, say if I'm coming there for a week to to you know check out the land, get to know the people? Uh, yes, uh, you can stay at one of the resorts. You're right. It, it, uh, the property is not too far from the beach. You can stay by one of the beach resorts. You can stay in one of uh, in the small hotels along the along the main road. Um, and the good thing about it, everything there is cheap, super cheap compared to everywhere else. Okay, cool. Sounds good, man. Looking forward to it, man. Absolutely, definitely. And when you're ready, just, you know, just, you know give me a shout and um, I'll get one of our folks to connect with you and you're good to go. All right. All right, man. Uh, yes, and also, brother, thank you for sending the paperwork. Got all of them. Everything looks good. Okay. Hey, man, um, <laughs> I, I want to I wanna echo what the, what the last brother said. Uh -huh. uh, and this is, this is from the ground up. This is going to take a community to get this thing off the ground. And, and so far, man, with, the, with what I hear, Bomani, is coming, it's coming together. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Um, you know, that's what Jonathan was uh, saying, uh, you know, because uh, him and Yakisha went to the property, and <laughs> and we, were, we weren't able to walk walk so far. But, um, you know, it's, you know it's, just, it's just one of those things where this is how you build experience and this is how you build a nation. You know, from the ground up, and you just get there. But for those who are not trying to deal with that drama, which I definitely understand, there are several different estates going on there in Ghana where you can get you, you know, you can get you different uh, homes, and you know, you have yourself organized and be more settled. You know, so, but you know, we always want people to feel comfortable when they get there. And if 
comfort is building from the ground up with us, then let's do it. And if it's for them to go and get something you know, that's already done, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, I always got one or two people that they work both angles. They work trying to get people land, and they also work to get people, uh, you know, people, you know, homes that's already set already. So whenever, if anybody that's what you're into, you know, you know, we definitely understand that. Just reach out to me and I'll help you. I got your back. Hi, this is Kim from California. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, greetings, uh, Kim. How are you? I'm well, and you? My yes. question is about planting. I know next month is the planting season, and I saw the email um, for the planters, but it didn't specify the prices, so can you send us something with the prices, the type of trees, the size of the trees? And also, I would need a schematic of my plot so that I would know where I want those trees planted. Can you put that together for me? Or for Absolutely. Us? What I'm doing is making a note of what you just said. Um, as far as, you know, as far as the, the prices, um, yes, I would get with David and have him give us a price or check my email, see if he's already sent me one, and I'll get it to those of us who have purchased plots. And, um, okay, yes. because if, if my plot is cleared, I'd like to send whomever the money so and let them know where I would like the different trees planted as you know, as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the go yeah, and, and yeah, I realize that um, people want to plant early. Uh, we still uh, have to wait a little bit uh, before we can start finalizing on doing that. Uh, there are bulldozers. Okay. So I'm hoping to get, uh, by the time I get there, things are marked off like that, and hopefully I can just come back and let you know um, in a month's time. Um, good news that we can start planting, but um, uh, just, yeah, just give us a little bit and uh, we're definitely uh, uh, clear for that. But uh, as far as uh, the layout of the land, uh, I'll definitely uh, speak to Garadina on that because uh, they have those blueprints and things like that. And that okay, would also great. give us an you. idea of how to look at land, so I'm glad you brought that up. It's a perfect... Uh, um, and uh, you're set to come there in December, Kim, so look forward to you coming on the journey, and we should have a whole lot done by then. I'm looking forward to it. That's right, perfect. All right, excellent, Donna. Thank you. Appreciate your energy. Thank you. All right, excellent family. Uh, we have went, um, it is 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so if anybody literally have any questions or want to talk about something, uh, open your line and we can just go through it real quick, uh, but I uh, yeah, need to release the call so we don't hold certain people up who has to be there first thing early in the plantation in the morning and for people like myself that got to get up early in the morning, take the little youth to school and get ready for morning business. Yes, Bomani, this is Laverne. I just Robin, want to... I just want to thank you for Jonathan, hold on for a second. the contribution that you're being in the world. Uh, yes, I appreciate it. I appreciate your energy. Uh, yeah, just um, trying to be, you know, trying to be more positive and be one of us that wants to make this thing move and things like that. So, yeah, that's trying yes. to lead by example and trying to make, you know, do the best we can do to make it work. Uh, and uh, and you know, I really feel as long as we stay in union, we're good to go. Yes, you're doing it. Bomani. Blessings. I appreciate you. All right, Brother Jonathan, give me a second. All right, oh, all right. I'm just saying, yeah, I was just saying, you rub it in there. Some of us got to go back to the work tomorrow. <laughs> and you said, you, you're doing it, man. So, what's I got up? I too, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and if you know, I'm gonna get time, there. people are going to be calling me 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Because yep. you know, it's yeah. like 10 o'clock there in the morning. They think it's 10 o'clock in the morning here. I'm like, yo, do you know it's 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I guess that's a perfect way to end it, uh, family. I just want to say, you know, that's the type of energy that we want, that, you know, all of our collective energy is going to be built on, you know, furthering our cause and <clears throat> building up our community. And it's not going to be used for building up your rubus and I think that's the most important thing that we got to keep in mind and all the other details of how it's going to get done and 
you know, getting bogged down on, on this and that, you know, that's going to fall by the wayside in hindsight. We just need to make sure that we actually follow through with the movement and actually get this done and, and work together. Yes. Absolutely Ashe. appreciate you, brother. And uh, go ahead, Laverne. No, I just said Ashe. I d- absolutely. I appreciate it, G. So, family, um, appreciate everyone. Uh, for those who didn't um, get a chance to ask a question and still need to communicate with me, you can call or text me or reach out to me uh, via email um, and just whichever way you send out a message, I'll communicate back with you. Uh, this is just a high priority. I want to make sure I connect with as much people as possible for I leave for Ghana uh, May 22nd and I'll be there until June 11th. Um, the tour ends June 4th, but I'm staying back to work with Garvey Town and do a bunch of documentation so we can get more people on board because it seems like more people want some more documentation so we'll get them some more uh, but at the same time too people will keep on waiting to see us build this is going to be built and then you're going to be out of place we're not going to have any space for you um, but anyway family um, for those who are interested please fill out applications fill out all this stuff uh, scan and send it to me and let's get you started and put you in a pen and folder Submit your payment and let me send your money to Garvey Town so they can have your lot set. That when you get there, it's marked off with your name, it's you know it's set and so on. Uh, so other than that, uh, for the people who purchase their plots, I'll be reaching out to you. Um, that way we can talk about the the next set of stage where we have where we can, we're going to get our lots um, parted off and set and pillows set with our name on it and everything. So family, beyond that, uh, everybody, uh, you take care, and I'll connect with everyone, and I'm available I'm here at my office. I'll be getting ready for my Ghana tour, so I'll be here just getting everything finalized and organized and things like that. So any questions about Garvey Town, just reach out to me. I want to talk to everyone who I need to talk to, and if you have more questions, that's absolutely fine. I want to make sure that we take care of all those things. Uh, but we definitely need people to be dedicated and you know, lock in. So I'll be looking out for your applications that I need this week and everybody else you take care and I'll connect back with you. Thanks brother. Peace.